Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what makes a company pick a certain language for their backend? So let's get into it. Well, this is a very, very, very hard question because it's, uh, well, I can only give you my experiences on this and the sort of things that I know most companies consider when they make a backend uh, decision. It doesn't have to be backend, but since that's the question. So the problem with answering this question is that we need to fundamentally understand one, pro one thing about software development and IT in general, and that this is something that is extremely hard for quite a lot of, uh, I'm, I don't know if it's, because it's not, this is not just about being a junior. This is not about being inexperienced. This is, I mean, I see mid-level and more experienced programmers who just seem, especially the ones who are really overt about what language is the best language. They talk about performance and they talk about different aspects that are, and they speak about this as if it's so obvious that this is what everybody thinks about. I mean, that's the, the their perspective on this is so, let's call it short-sighted, or it's like they lack the ability to understand of the people and their decision process. So I'm not saying that this is hard, it's, it's hard to find people who seem to be able to grasp this concept. And that is that, guys, the decision that a company makes when investing into a language, just because what somebody picks, say, Go or Node or something like that, that doesn't mean that they pick that language because of some objective value that they could identify that is just universally true. Every single company picks their stack based on their pers like their preferences and their experiences and like their use case. Sometimes they don't even do that and I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that as well. So generally, in general, the three things that matter when a company makes a tech decision on a backend language are the following three. First thing first, I'm just going to give you this in sort of constant. I mean, this it doesn't even have to be true in this scenario, these scenarios either. But let's say for the sake of argument that you are starting a company from absolute scratch. Now, there's quite a lot of of people out there on the internet who will make the claim that when you or rather they will have the incorrect assumption that what's true at large scale and the sort of the considerations you have to make at large scale is the sort of considerations that you're going to make at small scale. This is absolutely false. Some companies do pay the cost of having an elaborate solution at the start of things without any proven benefit. An example is that there's nothing, no one has ever proved definitively that using microservices at small scale is a useful thing, but some companies do pick microservices as an architecture at small scale. Just as some companies decide to pick, say, C Sharp or Java at small scale, even though they could have gone with something else, a scripting language or thing, as other, other things. But the considerations that you have to make at small scale are not the same, same considerations you necessarily have to make at large scale. If you look at, say, P, uh, PHP, and you look at Facebook, when Facebook was started, the like Zuckerberg and like the people behind Facebook, they picked PHP. Is this a good solution? If you think about that from today's perspective, it's one of the biggest applications in the world. Is this a good solution? Well, considering that they basically had to create their own language on top of PHP, some would argue that this was probably not the, it's not the right call for today. Just as Ruby for Twitter may have been a very good solution in the beginning of things, but today they're using Scala or they're migrating over to Scala because their use case has changed. It's a different discussion today. And that's the thing, the first thing. When you start out, it's usually more, most common that people consider their own personal productivity when they start. And if you think about that, that makes a lot of sense. Why would I, as a single developer, before I even have money in my pocket, I don't even know if my ID is going to go anywhere. I don't even know if it's going to make it or break, like it, there's no, I have nothing. I start from absolute scratch. Why would I pick a super performant or super complicated solution for my project? If I know PHP and I'm really good at PHP or I'm really good at Ruby, why would I sit down and learn Scala? 
just to get the project up and running. Why? There's no point. I would actually, that would be a really stupid, in many ways it would be a very odd decision because I have no guarantees that this decision is going to be the right decision and it's going to slow me down. And in the beginning of a company's lifespan, the most important thing is feature development, velocity. How fast can you produce feature and experiment and fail and reiterate and do this sort of thing? So that's one aspect, considering a language from the perspective of productivity. If you pick a language that the most amount of people at your company, or if you are just an individual, that they know and they really have a good grasp of, then you're going to be able to optimize for developer speed. So that's one thing. And another as aspect is, let's say that you're working at a mid-sized company. It doesn't even have to be a mid-sized company, but just this is also an, a perspective that some people have when they make a tech decision. And that is, all right, so now you need people. And this is a very underestimated thing for quite a lot of people. And this is the thing that see, some people just, they just don't seem to be able to grasp that this is a factor. And that is the popularity of the language. How likely are you to find people who already know this language, who have a seniority with it and can get productive really, really quickly, or that they really want to work with that language because recruiting people and getting people on board is also a thing. And this, and this, doesn't, this can be on both sides of the slope. You could pick Java and be fairly certain that you will find people who know this language really, really well, because it's, a, it's, one of the, it's the second largest programming language in the world. It has the most amount of people who kind of know it, and like one of the most mature platforms in the world, just as C-sharp has. So you could go that route. But on the other hand, you could also go, well, you could have that gut feeling and say, well, a lot of, like, we don't just want quantity, we want quality programmers, we want people who are really enthusiastic about programming. So maybe we should go with one of the more, the less used languages that more the, like the truly passionate developers go into. Let's say that you pick Node or Go or Scala or F Sharp or something like that. That's another pro approach to the problem or to say that, yeah, I'm, we're going to go with this because it's really, really trendy or it's really popular. And then lastly, you can think about the perspective of a really massive super company or like a really, really big corporation where you're going to make a tech decision. And in this scenario, if you're an architect of some type and you're going to make a decision that is going to affect a multi-billion dollar company or multi-million dollar or whatever, like a really big company, and we, you have hundreds of employees and, t and tons and tons of projects, then maybe what your decision is going to factor in the most is, okay, what is going to be the most stable solution here? Because you're going, you have all of these different use cases and there is a value to having just a few or ideally one language for everybody to work on because then you can optimize quite a lot of things towards that. But if you're going to have one single language or just a handful of languages that make up your entire company tech ecosystem, then you're going to have to think about stability quite a lot, as an example. You pick, like quite a lot of corporations pick Java and C Sharp because they're very stable. They will provide you with all of the tools that you need in order to pretty much deliver any project regardless of what it is. You don't want to pick in this scenario necessarily a language that is either very, very fresh or very unsupported or unproven because you might find yourself in a situation where some projects may actually struggle to get delivered or you might find it hard to find people or to, to, to deliver good code because you picked something that is not that supported, it might actually fall through and it might not see the sort of uh, maintenance that you need in a really large company because your projects or like the, this decision, the cost of changing from one language to another, that is a cost that you're going to measure in very likely millions, m millions of dollars if you want to do a migration for a really big co company. So that's a decision where stability might be the most important thing. And lastly, I will give you the thing that most people underestimate when it comes to making a tech decision, and that is gut feeling. Yes, gut feeling, and this, this spans the entire tech stack. It goes from the smallest one-man company to the largest corporation. Gut feeling has a large impact on the sort of thing that people pick for their tech stack as well. And if, if you consider how much money 
go that goes into lobbying for different solutions by Google and Facebook and like these bigger IT companies, you will see that the I mean there programmers are pe people as well, right? Promoting a product, it actually works. And if you can convince people that they need your tools or you can really hype something to, uh, to, like, to a certain degree, people will just pick it because they kind of feel like, yeah, this would be interesting. I don't know how many times I've heard fairly senior developers go and say like, oh, yeah, we should, we should try this out. And then you ask them about it and they kind of, and you ask like concretely, why do you think we should go with this solution? And finally, like they start giving you the same sale pitch arguments as the people on the TikToks are giving. And then finally, it all boils down to them saying, well, I just really want to try it out. That's a big thing as well, just going with gut feeling. So what I want you to take away from what I want you to take away from this is basically that the things that people consider generally when they make a tech decision for their backend language is things such as how productive are you going to be able to be in this language? How popular is the language? How likely are you, in other words, to get people to hire so that you can get even more velocity from just hiring people or re employer branding? Can you pick a language that is fairly cool or trendy so that people will want to actually work for you because it's, a hard, th it's hard to find developers today? And things such as how stable is this platform? Is it going to be well supported for maybe 30 years if you're making a tech decision for a really, really large company? And lastly, people actually go with their gut feeling quite a lot. You would be surprised. You may think that there's this kind of democracy to completely informed decision type of thing going on every time even a large company makes this sort of decision. The reality, however, is that the tech decision will often come down to one or two people, like architects or tech leads of some sort, and their personal experiences within the workforce. They will pick a language based most often based on their personal perspective on what their company needs and their personal, ex and their personal gut feeling. <clears throat> and that is a very subjective thing. That's why it's very odd for anybody to claim that one language or another is a perfect solution. There are considerations to make regardless of which one you pick. And it's all but impossible to claim that one thing is objectively better than another without considering all the factors. And that in is almost impossible, I'm sorry to say. Have a great day.